Thanks for watching County Report this week. I'm Susan Kennedy. Rockville's mayor and council are elected every two years in a nonpartisan election where 37,000 registered voters have the chance to elect one mayor and four council members. This year's election consisted of a field of 10 candidates vying for the five spots, and the election results are now in. I was able to be a part of the Rockville 11 team for the election results, and our Rockville 11's Bridget Breuer has more. Bridget? That's right, Susan. It was an exciting election night here in Rockville as we waited for the results to come in, and now Rockville has a brand new mayor and council for the next two years. Rockville Mayor Phyllis Marcuccio was re-elected to serve as the city's mayor during the City of Rockville's 63rd Mayor and Council election. Incumbents Bridget Newton and Mark Pershala were also re-elected, along with former council member John F. Hall Jr. and newcomer Tom Moore to round out the four council seats. We talked to the winners on election night after the results came in. Hey, listen, this is one incredible city that I, I, we all live in, and if, if the city's citizens want me back, I'm there. Mayor Phyllis Marcuccio has served one term as mayor and two terms on the city council. She beat out incumbent council member and challenger Peter Gajewski. There were eight candidates running for the four open council seats, and here's what the winners had to say. I think we're going to actually uh, look to try and ensure that the council is able to uh, cohesively function uh, in, a, in a respectful uh, and productive manner in a way that I think it, sometimes it hasn't over the past few years. I'm relieved. I am excited. I think it's a great opportunity for Rockville, and I'm looking forward to another two years with uh, Phyllis Marcuccio as mayor and um, John Hall and Mark and Tom. I think um, we're going to work well together. Well, I think our budget will be a continual challenge. Um, I never promise anything in the way of give back on $100 tax credit because I think our challenges are very severe. Um, I would like to go forward with the Rockville Summit and the outcome from that. I think we need to plan for the future. So that's what I'm going to be look, looking forward to. Well, I'm very pleased. It's, uh, I think it's a clear message the voters sent that uh, they want a council that can work together, be civil, uh, and really chart a course for the city. There was a total of 6,240 votes, or 16.94% cast in 10 voting districts throughout the city. The new mayor and council will be sworn in during an inauguration ceremony at 7 p.m. Monday, November 28th at City Hall, and that will be carried live on Rockville 11. For County Report This Week, I'm Bridget Breuer. The city of Gaithersburg also elected three at-large members to its city council. Incumbents Ryan Spiegel, Judd Ashman, and Kathy Drisgula will return to the Gaithersburg Council for the next four years. Work has begun on a bill that would certify the county's redistricting commission's recommendations to revise the boundaries of the five council districts. The revised plan is based on results from the latest census, and it would go into effect for the 2014 council election. Well, I think it's uh, mostly about making sure that our community stay as a whole. Uh, that was one of the concerns that we had going into this and uh, made it clear to the redistricting commission that that was our expectation. Uh, there were initial proposals at the beginning, one that was sponsored by Mr. Kawadi that actually uh, split Germantown into two, uh, which wouldn't have made sense. You know, Germantown has been a strong community that's really grown from something that's small into something that's very large and uh, has a large pocket of voters, but they all uh, want to be kept together in this. And so I think that that's really one of the things. We want to make sure that uh, overall that communities stay as a whole. Bulk trash pickup continues to top the list of the most popular calls from residents to the county's 311 center. Now those who need this service can actually create a request online 24-7. The county executive has announced a new feature that requests pickup with the click of the mouse. Lorna Virgili has the story. There's a new way to expedite scrap metal recycling in the county and to place requests for bulk trash pickup. Thus far this year, the county has received 39,000 pickup requests to 311. But now the service is expanded by logging on to nc311.com. This is why we wanted to make it even easier for our residents to request and schedule pickup of these items. And it is working. Since October the 15th, when it first became available, the new online program has averaged approximately 25 service requests a day, and that is without any publicity. The 24-7 service gives residents the opportunity to submit requests anytime. 
whether it's an old lawnmower or refrigerator. The county wants to make sure that the scrap metal ends up here and it's recycled instead of being illegally dumped. Scheduled pickups end up at the Shady Grove Processing Facility and Transfer Station. The easier we make it for people to recycle their scrap metal and also get rid of their bulky waste like couches and things like that, the easier that is, the fewer times we'll see it on the side of the road somewhere and have to pick it up that way. Residential properties that receive county trash services are entitled to five bulk collections per year. Scrap metal is any item made of 51 percent or more metal. Not only is this about responsible environmental stewardship and helping our residents uh, with their day-to-day -day needs, but it's really a great example of a high-quality, responsive, progressive government. Both bulk trash and scrap metal pickups may be scheduled online at www.mc311.com or by calling 311. For County Report This Week, Lorna Virgili. Recently, Council Vice President Roger Berliner arranged a meeting with members of the Prince George's County Transportation, Housing and Environment Committee to discuss transportation issues of mutual interest. Mr. Berliner told us what was achieved in this first joint meeting of these two committees. We did achieve what we hoped to achieve simply by virtue of having the meeting, which as you observed was the first time our two committees have met. Actually, it's the first time any two committees have met jointly from Prince George's County and our county. And it seems to me that particularly with respect to transportation, our needs are so interdependent. We are linked together. We need to solve our problems together and we can't do that unless we talk together. So I feel very good that we began to communicate together, bring people together, hear the same things and know what each other is doing. So I think it was successful. Construction of the tallest building in the county is officially underway. The groundbreaking ceremony of the Wheaton Safeway took place this week. The store will be part of the new Wheaton mixed-use development near the Metro Red Line station. The new grocery store includes a 486-unit apartment complex built above the store. Construction of the entire 17-story project should last about 24 months. Still ahead on County Report this week, the schools take time to celebrate military families in our area. And the Rockville Town Center approaches its five-year anniversary. We'll take a look at where it stands today. Stay with us. You may have already heard that Pepco and soon BG&E will be installing new meters called smart meters for all customers in Maryland. Pepco has recently begun installations in Montgomery County and they'll continue through 2012. You will receive information from your utility before they exchange your meter, which you should review carefully. This information helps explain the features of the new smart meters and when those features will be available. Satisfaction! That's awesome! In the real world, there is no spokesperson to prevent reckless driving. There's only you. Speak up. Whoa, Andy, slow down. Did you know there are more than 10,000 county government phone numbers? Now there is only one number you need to remember for non emergency calls 311. MC 311 is Montgomery County government's new online and telephone information system. Need information? Have a problem or complaint? Trying to locate a county government facility? Call 311. The call center is open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. The website is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Remember, call 311 to get it done. Welcome back to County Report This Week. November is National Military Family Month, and to celebrate this, Montgomery County Public Schools organized a military family resource event at Richard Montgomery High School. MCPS-TV has the story. Montgomery County Public Schools celebrated the National Month of the Military Family with a little pomp and circumstance. 
and provided access to important resources for families. Um, this is next weekend. It's actually on. Um Military families cope with some unique and often difficult issues such as long-term deployments and disruptions in a child's education due to reassignments here and around the world. The average child in a military family will change schools six or more times between kindergarten and grade 12. Supports from schools and the family become needed resources. That support is critical. That's the one thing we can do. We can support you in any way possible. That's huge with what you're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. More than 20 organizations came to Richard Montgomery High School to help provide that support. School system resources, military family support groups, and Montgomery County government agencies were on hand to answer specific questions. But often the most important thing is... They need to feel welcomed in a school. So transitioning into a new school environment is, um, is one of the hardest things that they can go through. So if a school is open and, and welcoming and um, oftentimes checking with them and making sure they're making a nice adjustment, it's easier on the family. Parents appreciated the opportunity to ask questions. I think it's a great idea. I think you have so many people, so many booths out here and everyone's helping, everyone's offering things. You have a lot of personnel here that's, that are really honestly saying, we're here to help you. We're committed to creating a welcoming environment for every family. So it's all about breaking down those barriers so that families feel more connected to the school system. Davis says that the research shows that when families are involved in their children's education, student achievement rises. The city of Rockville has grown from a community of farmers and shop owners to the third largest city in the state of Maryland. Rockville is known for its booming technology corridor along I-270, as well as its amenities like parks and the arts. But it's the town center that has come to define the city of Rockville and make it a destination location. But this wasn't always the case. Years ago, Rockville gutted its downtown and put in a mall. In the 80s, the town center suffered a period of decline and soon after became the first city in Maryland to undergo a government-funded revitalization. And thus began the transformation of this aging strip retail mall into a vibrant mixed-use development and focal point of the community. The redevelopment of Rockville was completed in 2007. Well, this is a, a great urban park and uh, has a nice feel to it. It's got a fountain that can be turned on and off. and This new town center has given the city a sense of community with the potential for so much more. What was it that made people realize that we needed something more here? Well, there were a couple failed efforts along the, you know, along the way. The Rockville Mall did not succeed. Uh, and then what followed after that uh, didn't have really a center to it. And uh, I think uh, Rockville really got it right uh, over the last uh, 10 years in, in uh, using best, good uh, urban design and town center design uh, strategies to put this together. This 60-acre project started with the construction of the anchor of the town center, the Rockville Library. The library was funded by the county, an investment Phil Andrews says has paid off. This is the ideal sort of place for development in Montgomery County. It's right in the center of the county, in the county seat, next to a metro with uh, with very uh, appealing businesses here already and a nice mix of uses from residential, commercial, retail, theaters, movie theaters, uh, and uh, now a hotel. It was this active civic, retail, and residential new neighborhood that attracted Marquise Evans to Rockville. A Montgomery County native, Evans manages Austin Grill at the town center. He is just what officials envision when planning the town center. A resident who lives and works right in downtown Rockville. He's affectionately known as the mayor of the town center. How is that being a, a person who lives and works really close to home? Well, you know, I, I live and work here, and literally in this building, I live and work here. Uh, you know, I, I don't mind. I like seeing friendly faces every day. Um, I always know what's going on in the neighborhood. So if there's something happening, they always call me and say, Marquis, you got to get downstairs. Guess who's here? So uh, fortunate for me, that, that works out in my favor. Recently, officials broke ground in Rockville on the new corporate headquarters for Choice Hotels. When the facility is complete in two years, more than 400 Choice employees will be relocated to the new facility. 
yet adding another piece to the puzzle in the success of the town center. Our future is intertwined with Rockville's, especially uh, since uh, this is the place that people see when they come to visit the county government and uh, the county council, the county executive and our departments, they come to Rockville. And, and the county has a very strong interest in, in uh, helping Rockville continue to be a great place. It's a, been a thriving community for a long time, uh, wonderful people. Uh, but the county very much has a stake in Rockville. The Montgomery College community is represented by students from over 170 countries, and to highlight this diversity, the college offers a unique program. Here's MCTV student reporter Lillian Moss with a look. A few years ago, two Montgomery College professors took a look at the growing number of international students at the college and recognized a need to celebrate this diversity. So they created the gathering. What the gathering does is, is celebrates different cultures, different uh, traditions, different issues that we consider that need to be addressed. So it can vary from caring issues to cultural um, presentations. One of the cultural presentations that Professor Smith was talking about was a recent Peruvian festival held on the Rockville campus. It was a perfect example of the type of program the gathering offers the college community. And this year is the opportunity for Peru to uh, show what we have, our culture, our uh, economy, everything about our country. The festival offers students, faculty and staff the opportunity to learn about Peruvian culture, history, geography, cuisine, music and dance. And those who came to the event seemed to love it. Oh, this place is astonishing. I love it. Um, the food is so great. I think I had every single, every single food they had there. I think I had every, it's just fantastic. I love the dancing. Yeah, the dancing as well, especially the food. In addition to the food, music, dancing, and fun, that the Peruvian festival provided, Montgomery College administrators also believe that the event the gathering puts on play an even more significant role for the entire college community. I think these sort of events are essential to creating an engaging campus, creating a welcoming environment for students from all backgrounds. So these diversity events are very, very, very important to our community. Still to come on County Report, Work continues on a controversial bill that deals with big box retailers. And do you ever think about how the human population affects animals around us? We'll tell you when County Report This Week continues. Low fat cheese sandwiches and whole wheat bread. Chewy and good for you. Snacks high in calcium help build strong bones and foods rich in fiber are good for your heart, so you have the power to dominate. Can your food do that? Run, throw, think, eat better. Find out more at smallstep.gov. Welcome back to County Report. In other news, members of the Planning, Housing and Economic Development Committee had their first work session on the new community benefits legislation. The bill would require big box retailers who want to locate in the county to enter into an agreement with at least three recognized civic organizations. Members of that committee have differing views on the necessity of this legislation. I'm in favor of it, and I think it's uh, it's an effort to try to get more benefits for the community at the same time that certain very, very large projects by very, very large corporations are coming into the county that tend to pay very, very low wages. And, you know, the, the costs of those jobs are often socialized. I mean, we wind up picking up the, we pick up the tab for 
you know, essentially when workers don't get paid, they become county liabilities. Um, so people are looking to see what kind of benefits we can bring to the communities to ameliorate some of the effects of some of these projects. And not everything is addressed through the planning process. They really are more limited to looking at planning and zoning issues. They're not able to look at some of the, the broader considerations. I'm just asking the sincere questions that come to my mind, and the answers are not satisfactory. It's not at all clear what this bill will do. It's not clear who is involved. It's not clear who the community groups are. We have thousands of community groups in Montgomery County, so uh, no, no one group speaks for the community. Um, and different groups will have different interests that may or may not represent the broad community's interests. Um, and there's a very vague definition of what the benefits are supposed to be. It's just not well thought through. Now here's Tom Pogue with this week's transportation update. Hi, I'm Tom Pogue, Community Relations Manager for the Department of Transportation. Here's an update for Montgomery County. The county's Pedestrian and Traffic Safety Advisory Committee, in coordination with the Washington Area Bicycles Association and MCDOT, recently hosted a bike ride-along. Participants, who included the planning board chair, two council members and local officials, got a first-hand look at what bicycling in Montgomery County entails, both the pleasures and the challenges. The nine-mile route traveled between North Bethesda and downtown Silver Spring, taking riders along bikeways, roadways, and trails used daily by both commuter and recreational bikers. On average, more than 100 bicycle collisions occur each year in the county. When you're driving, remember the new Maryland law that passed last fall, which requires motorists to give bikes three feet of space when passing. Bicyclists are no longer required to ride on the shoulder. However, if traveling at less than the speed of traffic, a bicyclist must still ride as near to the right of the roadway as practical and safe. For more information about biking, visit our website at bikemontgomery.com. We're working to keep you moving safely. A few weeks ago, the world's 7 billionth baby was born in the Philippines, and while the human population continues to rise, animal conservation has increasingly become a problem. Susan Stark, MCM's host for Think Green, visited a local zoo to find out more on how the human population explosion is affecting animal conservation. Developing appreciation of wild animals is an important goal for the Maryland Zoo in Baltimore, but they are also in the forefront of species conservation. Without their efforts to save endangered animals, we would have lost the opportunity of seeing a lot of these animals already going extinct in the wild. And with me is Meredith Wagner, Mammal Collection and Conservation Manager. Hey, thanks for having us today. In our lifetime, we have greatly accelerated the natural rate of extinction, far beyond what we've ever seen before. Why is this happening now? The human population is exploding, and so we have a lot of humans in animal areas that didn't used to be there. So a lot of these problems, um, poaching, uh, the bushmeat trade, just re you know, general loss of habitat is coming from just the human population explosion. Why is it important for the survival of all these animals that are going extinct? Lots of different reasons. Um, one of them is really to get folks out there caring about animals. You know, seeing an elephant up close, I mean, you talk about the forefront. Here we have Dolly the elephant right up here. And, you know, it really makes a difference having people being able to come out and see them, then they'll care about conservation. Extinction is not just a problem of loss of species, but it's a problem with loss of populations. What kind of effect will that have on us? I think. Part of the way that we relate to, um, to animals in the environment is as, uh, as a resource for us. You know, there'll be a time in the future, possibly the near future, where you can't go out as a tourist and see polar bears in the wild or penguins in the wild or especially Panamanian golden frogs in the wild. You know, we won't, we'll lose any of the ways that these could have benefited us as a human population um, for medical research and those things. And again, the, some of, losing some of these flagship species means that we're also losing the habitats that um, we depend on as a human population. For more information, log on to MarylandZoo.org. You can support any of the animals that reside at the Maryland Zoo in Baltimore by giving a charitable gift to adopt an animal program. Your contributions go directly into helping them to continue their extraordinary work in the conservation and care of our favorite animals. In our Pet of the Week segment this week, Kathy Stanhope has a cat named Suzuki who is available for adoption with lower fees as part of a county program. Hi, this is Kathy Stanhope with your Pet of the Week at the Montgomery County Humane Society. 
and I am here with Suzuki. As you can see, see Suzuki is an orange, medium-haired cat. Did you know there's a superstition about orange cats? That you adopt an orange cat, you will be instantly attracted to money. That makes as much sense as having a black cat bring you bad luck, so if you have an orange cat, she'll definitely bring you money. Suzuki here is about eight years old. She was found as a stray. And the interesting thing about adopting an eight-year-old cat from us is we run a golden oldie special. If you adopt a cat that's seven years or older, you have special discounts and you also receive a coupon for special vis vet vi visits. And if you're a senior yourself and you adopt a senior cat, you get an even better discount and better consideration. So come on down and meet Suzuki. She really wants to go home with somebody. Visit us here on Rothgeb Drive in Rockville or visit us on the web at mchumane.org or give us a call at 240-773-5967. Meet Suzuki. I know you'll love him and you'll go home with a new best friend. Up next on County Report, we'll show you how earthworms can be useful in preserving our environment. And a special recognition for the community of Leisure World. Stay with us. You don't have to deliver 15 tons of food to the hungry. You can start with 10 ounces. You don't have to dedicate your life to saving lives. You just dedicate 15 minutes. The men and women of America's Navy do some amazing things to make the world a better place. But then again, so can millions of everyday Americans right in their own backyards. Brought to you by America's Navy. Iona Rosie O'Brown, who studied and taught art at MC, is one of the artists featured in 30 Americans, an exhibit at the Corcoran Gallery of Art in D.C. The exhibit showcases works by many of the most important African-American artists of the last 30 years and runs through February 12th. Almost 200 MC students have been working this fall at two archaeological sites in Montgomery County. They're earning service learning credits and learning about the county's heritage while excavating materials from prehistoric and historical sites in county parks. The MC Dance Touring Company is about to begin a month-long tour of Montgomery County Public Schools. The students will present lectures and demonstrations at high schools and middle schools throughout the county. For more information about the endless possibilities at your community college, visit our website. Welcome back. Vermicomposting is the process of using earthworms to turn kitchen waste into nutrient-rich growing material. Our friends at Brookside Gardens show us how to make your own worm compost system. You might think worms are gross, but they're great composting tools for your garden. Uh, this worm bin here at Brookside Gardens is an outstanding way to compost food scraps from a small kitchen. Uh, worms are actually great recyclers of organic material and with the right environment uh, you can compost your food scraps from your kitchen year round and make great potting soil and great compost for your container plants uh, or for your vegetable garden or your ornamental garden using worms like this red wiggler that I have here in my hand. Uh, worms can actually eat their body weight uh, in produce in a very short amount of time and a very small number of, of worms in the right environment with good bedding like this shredded uh, paper and a healthy supply of fruits and vegetables, coffee grinds, uh, tea bags, anything organic that comes out of your kitchen can give you uh, outstanding compost all throughout the year and you can use it in your garden to grow very healthy plants. And finally, council members officially recognize the 45th anniversary of the Leisure World community. There are close to 9,000 residents who live in this age-restricted community that's located in Silver Spring. They're one of the most active precincts in the county, and I tell you, elected officials know that very well, uh, and, uh, and they definitely spend a lot of time there, but it really is an example, I think, to the rest of our county residents, uh, no matter what your age, that civic participation really is the key, um, and it really is part of the cornerstone of our democracy. Well, that's all we have for this edition of County Report this week. Be sure to tune in again next week for a look at what's going on inside Montgomery County. Thanks for watching.